Kentucky with Outdoor Recreation here at Whetstone Park. And today we are doing Pollinator Field Day. And so in a moment, we are about to go out and be a part of the bio blitz that's happening. So we're gonna try to get a look at what different species are out in the prairie, any pollinators, any flowers, any other species that we find. And we're going to take a picture and put it on the iNaturalist app so that anybody who wants to look and see what's growing here can find that data. with Columbus Recreation and Parks and we're out here in Whetstone Prairie today for our second annual pollinator field day. So today we're having volunteers remove woody plants from the prairie and also collect seed. Uh, today we've got some native grasses. So this is Virginia wild rye and its close cousin Canada wild rye. And then we've got two flowering plants that we're collecting and this is bee balm. This is prairie dock. So we're collecting these seeds, we're going to dry them, and then we're going to place them at another park in our park system. Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome to the Whetstone Prairie. I'm with the Outdoor Recreation Section for Columbus Rec and Parks at Pollinator Field Day. So here we are in the prairie. We're going to go on a tour. We're going to first talk about the iNaturalist app that we're using today to ID the species as a part of the BioBlitz so that people can, that we can gain a better understanding of the plants and animals that live here. So Justin's over here and he's got his phone. <laughs> so you can go into the app store on your phone and download the iNaturalist app. And then what you can do is you can then photograph either a plant or an animal that you see and it's important to get a good clear focused shot and then it will actually suggest to you what that plant or animal might be and then if you're not sure what it is you can still post it and then people can go on who do know what it is and then suggest an id for it which is really awesome i personally have even learned a lot of different things from other people helping me id them so it's a really great app that's user friendly so he's iding over there what do you got justin a locust borer beetle Yes, and so this is a really awesome beetle that we found earlier on one of our tours that actually mimics a bee. So it looks a lot like a bee mm -hmm. in its coloring. It's got yellow and black on it, but it's actually a beetle. So it looks like a bee, but it's a beetle. So it's <laughs> pretty cool and exciting. It's one of the crowd favorites that we saw this morning and it's actually on a goldenrod plant, which is in bloom right now in the prairie, which is giving us this beautiful yellow color. It's one of my favorites. There's a few different types here that you see, but We'll kind of keep walking this way and we'll look at some of the other flowers that are in bloom. We have some of the asters that are blooming right now, which are another popular fall plant. And then one of these tall sunflowers. There's a beautiful sunflower plant. There's a lot of beautiful yellow colors. This area over here is a vernal pool where there's a lot of swamp milkweed, which is a popular plant for the monarch caterpillar which then is the monarch butterfly that then migrates all the way to Mexico. We have our butterfly net. Justin's got his here today. So if we do see any monarchs we will try and catch them to tag them because we can tag them with a specific ID number that then can help the research of monarch butterflies. That's one that at home you can keep an eye out for in your yard as they're passing through right now on their way down to Mexico to breed. Over here too there's lots of different bees that are pollinating the goldenrod. And if you even zoom in close, you might be able to see the pollen baskets on those hind legs that they're carrying the pollen in. The gold, goldenrod, again, is a great plant for them. There's just so much pollen in there on all those little flowers, which is awesome. We have only seen a few butterflies today. We saw the cabbage white butterfly, which is a, a pretty common one as well that we've seen out flying around today. Again, here's another kind of patch of those asters that are in bloom, and there's lots of little bees flying around on there collecting pollen. And so the projects like this of the prairie are really important again for pollinators to provide them for all these native plants that then they're able to pollinate. A lot of pollinators are very specific to certain plants, so they rely on those certain plants. So it's important that we, as Columbus Rec and Parks, have those plants available for them to pollinate. I'm trying to think of the hummingbird we saw this morning, which is we technically, 
do we did we consider we said, yeah the, a the, the hummingbird is a pollinator and we saw one of those they have those long beaks that then are able to kind of stick those into the mm -hmm. the different flowers and the nectar to collect and they end up pollinating as well another un unlikely pollinator that people often forget about are bats so that probably we probably won't see that today while we're out <laughs> but that is one that does pollinate at night which is pretty interesting there's really cute pictures online of bats covered in pollen all the fur so that's another popular one and as well as moths those are there was a, another popular one thanks for tuning in we're super excited about the the prairie here and all the pollinators that enjoy it um, yeah, certainly go on and check out our programs that we have at the McKnight Outdoor Education Center. Again, this fall we have those after school programs, family canoeing. We have those canoeing classes are at Antrim, at O'Shaughnessy and Hoover, and then over at Griggs as well. So something even throughout the whole city, depending on where you're located. And those 50 plus programs, as well as those fishing programs. So if you're looking to get outside this fall with your family, then certainly go on and check out those programs. We've got a lot of fun stuff planned.